Today we take a look at five-star wing Chris Livingston. This is KSR of On3 Sports, the best of college sports and recruiting. When Chris was in the sixth grade, he was already six feet tall, dominating the early competition and towering over his peers in Northeast Ohio. Despite his size, he was still perimeter based, played positionless, which allowed him to play wherever he wanted on the basketball court. By the time he reached the summer after the eighth grade, he was now about 6'6", 185 pounds or so, just a crazy athlete. By this time, he was a number one or number two player in the class of 2022. Fast forward to the end of his senior year, Livingston is still around 6'6", maybe 6'7", but he has physically matured to about 215 to 20. Chris was an early bloomer. In basketball, that could be tough with guys who sprout very early because players can easily get forced into incorrect player roles and positions. Imagine if he was told to be a center as a taller kid growing up. Let's be real here. We're probably not making this video but he was surrounded by the right people early on in elementary and middle school who allowed him to play free, which is a huge reason why he's ranked 10th overall in the number three small forward via the on three consensus. He has the prototype of a strong, athletic, raw, talented, positionless perimeter type. His player comparison today is gonna to be former Arizona forward and current NBA player, Stanley Johnson. At their best when getting out in transition, finishing around the basket, with an athletic potential to be a high-level rebounder and defender. Livingston held offers from Kansas, Florida, LSU, North Carolina, Georgetown, Ohio State, a contract from the G League Ignite, and he ended up committing to Kentucky on September 15th. Right now, Livingston's bread and butter is his explosiveness, his physique, and his athletic prowess. Big-time dunker and finisher with or without contact. Prime strength and vertical leaping ability, he's one of the more physically gifted athletes in the 2022 class. He does some things on the court you just can't teach. In my opinion, he's at his best when he is within five to six feet of the hoop, doing some dirty work, exploding towards the rim, grabbing tough rebounds only he can get, and getting out in transition, running the wings or the rim hard. Livingston is at his best when he's able to get out in space and make plays after missed shots, bad shots, and live ball turnovers. Livingston is a straight line driver, dominant making plays and driving hard to his right. He loves driving off the dribble and utilizing his spin move to get deeper into the paint. One of the more underrated parts of his game is when he drives, he's under control and does a good job finding teammates for layups and open shots. He's continuing to work on tightening his handle, showing flashes where he can use a combo move and get to the rim, but has also shown flashes where he's a bit loose with the basketball. At Kentucky, if they can get him touches curling or cutting to the basket, utilizing two dribbles or less, you can have an efficient freshman. I will say Chris Livingston's jump shot has greatly improved since he's been in high school. In eighth grade, he shot more of a set shot, all arms. You see his elbow pointed down with a narrow angle and the ball in front of his face. Fast forward to a few years later, here's where I'm interested in his three-point shot translating to the college level. The ball is down right in front of his face. His offhand is up near the top of the basketball while he's in the air. So a lot of motion with his arms are occurring while jumping. Here's a look at how he loads his jumper. He brings the ball up his left side a bit, then brings the ball in front with narrow elbows. Here you see a normal rotation on a jump shot, how it goes straight back. But due to his mechanics, you see his rotation on a slight tilt sometimes like this. Because of all that, there could be inconsistent results, especially at the high major level where the game is sped up against good players on a deeper three-point line. There's no pressure in AAU, so he played a bit free, but watching his games at Oak Hill, he wasn't taking as many jump shots with this type of variety. In my opinion, he's taken at most two or three threes per game in college. He'll be at his best when playing around the rim and taking jump shots when left open. Overall, he's a raw talent with a very high ceiling. I think he can be used at both forward spots and cause some mismatch issues. He has tremendous talent and upside, and if the Kentucky staff can tap into the endless potential, he could be a scary player for the Wildcats come next season.